Hey y'all, how's it going? Well, it's been a while since we've done a video. We haven't done any gardening videos because we haven't done a garden. We're still very behind. It's May 10th and we don't have a single bucket full of uh, potting mix yet. I'm not sure how much of a garden we'll have this year. Things have just gotten in the way. Um, our son, Mark, and his wife, Morgan, and their new little baby, they just bought their first home and it needed some updates. So for the last two months or more, three mm -hmm. months, yeah, we've been working on various things. We've built a sofa table. We've built built-in bookcases in their bedroom. We did a stone coat epoxy countertop for their kitchen island. We updated the baby's room. Yep, board and batten walls. We built a boat shaped bookcase. Um, the mud room. Cabinets. Yeah, um, an ottoman. Anyway, we probably should have filmed a lot of that and I did film bits and pieces that I'm gonna put together uh, in a video strictly on their house and updates. But we have one final large project for their house and it's a TV entertainment center, bookcases on the side and kind of a seat thing and specialty wall behind the TV. Uh, this is our inspiration picture. That is what the kids liked. We're modifying it a little bit. It's not gonna have those sliding barn door things on the bottom, too complicated, too expensive. So we're modifying it to two side bookcases and kind of open cubbies on the bottom with the barn wood wall at the back. Uh, and we're gonna show you how we're gonna build all of that and put it together. We've been learning some real skills, watching videos many, many videos on cabinet making interior. We've done a lot of builds that are rough builds. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little more difficult to do something that's finished and polished. Finished and polished looking, yes. Right, so Randy, last night, created Randy, he comes out to where I'm at sitting and he says, hey, I think we need a new playlist on our channel and we can call it The Project. He even drew on an envelope. So, we're gonna show you what we're gonna do. Now, I'm always the architect and designer. I'm always kind of doing all the sketches. This was my first very rough sketch. Just kind of an idea. It's changed some since then. And then I started doing individual things, overall dimensions, kind of how to construct and construct. <laughs> and even to the point of mapping out so we get the right amount of wood and not too much wood, I laid it all out like I do it when I'm sewing, laying out a pattern. So when we cut things out, I'll be careful to watch how he's doing it. Better watch me. And now finally, we changed it again because we decided we're going to put a kick plate down like a real cabinet would be. So we had to adjust. So that's where we're starting. Step one is our kick plate. And as always, when we start a project, I always try to wear the right t-shirt. So this one again is perfect. With no further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the projects. <laughs> Already a different type of opinion with the very first cuts. I said I may be wrong, but it's highly unlikely I was wrong. But so was he, because he was supposed to check my numbers. Just saying. Just saying.
Well, a couple things we've learned uh, this morning. There's always a learning curve. Working with MDF, we've only worked with MDF one other time, and that was when we made the basic, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, table top for fitting down over Mark and Morgan's existing countertop, island countertop, but it was half inch. This is three quarter. And Randy had a new blade for fine tooth cutting and we didn't seem to have any problem. Well, we got started a bit ago with that same blade and it kept stalling and like burning. And so I started Googling MDF, I knew it, you know, that stands for medium density fiberboard and it's put together with a lot of glue. Apparently also some formaldehyde, formaldehyde, which is why you need to wear the mask. But you have to have a carbide tipped blade to cut this stuff. And so that little fine tip thing we had was not what was gonna work. Let me show you the difference. This is the fine tip that we were using. And this is what you're supposed to use. Now this is for the table saw. We have a smaller one for the circular saw that Randy is using. But we will be cutting on the table saw as well, so that's why he got one of these for the table saw and the chop saw. Big difference, huge difference, as you saw him just cut those pieces. Other tips, putting down some foam board, which is just like, stuff they use to put on the outside of houses. Randy had a nice big thick piece and so you can lay it down on your saw horses and go to cutting. Uh, other tip, we purchased, you'll see that we're gonna be using a lot of Craig, K-R-E-G jigs. This is one of them. This is the rip guy. And what do you think, Randy? You think it works pretty well? It works. Yeah. It just takes a minute to set up, but once you get it set up, it works. There are probably better ones that are more expensive that aren't as cheap as this little plastic stuff they have. Yeah, they could have they could have improved on that plastic here and they could have made it the same metal as the as the measurement bar, but other than that it's great. Yeah, we had a little issue calibrating it. Um testing to make sure the measurements on the bar were exactly correct. That took a little time because this is the first time we have used this. But I would say it's a huge time saver. You get perfectly straight cuts. Um, as long as you have a finished straight edge from which to guide your saw. So we've done three pieces. we got to do a fourth. And that'll be up next. Stuff makes a mess. 
some people have a saw that the vacuum hooks to it. I don't have one. Maybe I'll get one. What do you say? I was talking to the viewers. <laughs> okay. Well, what did you say? Some people have a saw that has a vacuum hook to it. I don't have one. Some people actually have a shop and don't get their porch. One day, maybe. Okay, now, these are the long ones, and we have to cut, nine, oh, I'll check, it's 95 and a quarter on two of them, and, and then the, we have to come and the up. the other two will be three and a half inches shorter. Right, because they're going to rest on top of the big plate. Right. 95 and a quarter of two, and then we have to notch those out. And then 91 and 3 fourths on two. Well, here's my take on MDF. I don't like it. It's a mess, and having to wear this mask, although I know you should wear a mask with regular wood dust, too. But, it doesn't have formaldehyde in it, like this stuff does. And, I have sensitive skin. And just being around this dust, can you see? There, and here, and here. No more MDF. I'd rather pay more board and have real wood. Just saying. I found this chart, which I need to print and put in our bag of Craig jigs. But it's the only place I have found where they show you what size screws you should be using. Um, and it's based on the thickness of your wood. Our thickness right here. Our thickness is three quarters of an inch. So we need to use an inch and a quarter pocket hole screw. Handy little thing trying to think of where I found it. It might have been on the Craig website. You also have to know the application. If you're doing indoor projects, you want uh, zinc coated. Outdoor projects, you either want the stainless steel pocket hole screws or uh, the blue coat because they're weather resistant. Then you need to know what type of wood you're using. If you're using softwoods, then you need coarse threaded. And if you're doing a hardwood, then you need the fine threads. So, this is three quarters. So we're gonna be using one and a quarter inch. It's indoors, so we're using zinc coated. And it's soft wood, so we're using coarse threads. Now to set up the pocket hole jig, the first thing you need to do is right here on the side, you loosen this, whatever that is, What's that called? It has a name. What's this called? A screw. Well, lockings, whatever. Oh. So the first thing we do is line it up. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. Oh, for heaven's sakes. It's full of sawdust, that's why. Gonna line it up on three quarters and what I'm lining up here is um, 
the depth of the slant and the distance of the slant for three quarter inch wood. And the bit that it comes with has these two guides here on the side. Turn it around so you can see the different measurements. Half, three fourths, one and a quarter, one and a half. And then here are your smaller depths of wood. So three quarters. Now when you line this up, undo it, because I know it was set for five eighths, the last thing we used. Body toddy. Lefty Lucy. Oh my goodness. Ridiculous. There. All right, so three fourths, but you don't line the tip up at the three fourths. You line it up right where it starts to widen, right where it's gonna dig in, like that. And then we push this up against the wall there, and we tighten it down. So now this is ready. This, will lock your wood in place and you can back it off or stretch it out so that you have a nice firm grip. So on little narrow pieces of wood like this, which these are braces for the back of the bookcase, uh, they'll be mounted with pocket holes. You only need two pocket holes. So in this case, on a narrow piece, you'll just drill here and here and flip it over here and here. Now we don't have a right and a wrong side to this, otherwise we'd be having to pay attention to that. But both sides are the same. There's not a right and a wrong. So, Randy will demo. It's got a full charge. You need to click it. Yep. I think you had turned it down because I was using it the other day and I was mm -hmm. squeezing it too hard and you turned it down where I couldn't. Well, we have one more thing to do before we can finally start assembling the carcass. Oh, and I got smart. I put on long sleeves to protect myself from that MDF nuisance dust. What we're doing here is creating a dado groove. We need a quarter inch because we're going to be putting quarter inch plywood for the back. So along the sides and the top and bottom of each of the bookcases and also on the center section we have to create that quarter inch groove. And we're using the table saw to do that. We started with getting our groove at the furthest point out which was three quarters of an inch and the saw blade itself is like an eighth of an inch. So we did all of our rips at the three quarter inch mark and then adjusted the saw blade inward and did another one a little bit closer to the edge and that was going to give us our quarter inch dado.
Okie dokie, the carcasses are built for the two side bookcases. We're not doing the center seat thing yet. Um, I don't guess. Do we want to put these on the thing? The kick plate uh, and do the center seat? Because once we start framing the yet. frames, that's we want to do all the frames. That's an in the morning project. What? To put these on there and do the center seat. Oh, you through working? No, there's other things we got. We got plugs to put in. Okay. Let's do everything we got to do to these two. Well, the frames. Well, the glue we have be to do the frames up. too. But yeah, okay. We got the plugs. They're in the bag. I mean. You know, the ones you can't see, you don't have to. But I think this I, this section right here is the only one you do. And, the and other, maybe this and one. And that one. Yeah, at least those two. You won't see them here. You won't see them down there unless you're laying on your stomach. So just these two. At least. Just so you at least. Okay. Well, with pocket holes... They make these paint grade plug thingamajiggers. Um, they don't fit perfectly. You have to finagle them in, the glue, finagle them in, kind of hammer them in, let it dry, and then sand it flat. But we don't want the, the holes to show. Um, depending on how tall you are, you might see them. So we have to fix that. Honestly, I think we should fix all three. Not worry with the bottom one. The bottom one's a very, where- uh, You have enough plugs, I agree. Okay. Count them. Well, let's do the middle two first and then we'll see if we have enough for these. 12, 24, 36. I don't know that we have that. I'm sure they have wrapped up um, we did all most all of our cutting major cutting on day one and then started putting together today so we got the two end bookcases carcasses built tomorrow we will put them on the kick plate and double measure in between for this the seat part which really nobody's gonna sit on it but I'm calling it the center seat because it's lower and it will line up down here with this these shelves right here in between and after that then we have to start building our frames for the tops we'll show you that process as we go